were some days that I didn't want to go <laughs> to chemo, and um, my drawings reflected that. My first drawing was inspired by Olivia. She was playing on the computer while I was getting ready for my first chemo appointment. I just pictured this computer screen that said, you know, cancer, yes or no, and Dr. Stampleman, can you help me with this? I think I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> it was a Tuesday night, I think it was um, March 18th, and I had just got back from my sister's and I had dinner there and I had, we had ate a lot of food. <laughs> and I came home and I was sort of itchy on my chest, uh, right around here, way up high. And I felt around and all of a sudden I felt a lump and it was an immediate reaction of panic. <laughs> So that was two days later, I went to the doctor and um, he said, you know, you need to go for a mammogram and set me up for a mammogram the very next morning at 7.30. I went in and they said, we're sorry that we have to tell you this, it's really a good thing that we um, checked it out because it did turn out to be something um, that we need to look into, it was cancer and the worst part about it is we don't know um, where it ends. We can't see the beginning of it because it, it ended up being all the way down to the chest wall. I basically just said, you know what, I can't, I can't listen to this anymore, <laughs> and I left. And it just so happened I had to go to my daughter's uh, talent show practice. I was practicing with Tatum, my friend with my auntie Candy and she was watching us and my mom said she got a call from the hospital that she had cancer. The night that I told her about the cancer will always be, you know, in my brain about the moment. We're very close and we do a lot um, together. So having to tell her that was really hard. Um, of course I was going through the feelings of what happens if this is really serious, you know, and um, just the fact that it's a lot of work being a single parent and then having to have all the treatments and lose most of your energy. Um, I was lucky that I didn't get sick a lot, but I had very little energy going through treatments. And I was very adamant that I didn't want to be the sick mom. Like when I first found it, I thought her heart was going to stop beating. Oh, you did? But it's still alive! Wow, it's beautiful. Did you see that wave? Nicole sought treatment from SCMHS Comprehensive Cancer Center and oncologist Dr. Laura Stampleman. Dr. Stampleman is wonderful. I feel really lucky that I've been able to have her as my doctor and she's much more than just the cancer diagnosis. It's any kind of um, problem that you're having and um, she's always asking you how you are doing mentally and how are you dealing with everything that's going on and how's your daughter. Um. <laughs> My prognosis is good. <laughs> um, I was cancer free right after the surgery when they took it out. Um, now all of these treatments are just for um, preventing recurrence. Oh, and then we gotta do like both like this. I never thought I would go through it the way I did and a lot of people I can't believe the way I went through it either, you know, I just, I just kept fighting. I took that original feeling of I need to be here for Olivia and just kept going with the strength. And if you can find your inner strength and your support system and your reasons for wanting to live, the treatment is doable and life does go on and, you know, a lot of the times you come out stronger in the end. Nicole Levere is one of the many courageous cancer survivors who can now support others who are fighting the disease. Last year, she and some fellow cancer survivors founded the group Monarch Cares, an organization that creates empowering connections through community, advocacy, resources, education, and service for other cancer survivors. This group supports young cancer survivors and assists them with their unique issues associated with going through cancer treatment as a young adult, including early menopause, relationships, and raising children.